this week on the show, we have actor John L. Jor, who plays Jason Weems in the 2024 remake of the hit movie Mean Girls. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding this concept, one day or day one. One of the greatest quotes by Paulo Coelho states this powerful saying that we can choose whether it's one day that we achieve our goals or it's day one of us starting. So often we procrastinate in achieving our goals by planning it to begin one day rather than making today the day we begin. Oftentimes, the thought of beginning sounds too daunting, so we keep putting it off and procrastinating our happiness. But what's worse, being stuck in a rut, never beginning, and always wondering what if, or rather, making it day one of beginning to accomplish all the goals you've always wanted to do. Oftentimes, overthinking and the fear of rejection keeps us from starting, as we overthink our way to inaction. Making your mission today to make it day one of accomplishing something you've been wanting to do but have been procrastinating on. Remember, simply the act of starting with small steps brings us that much closer to our goals. Make today the day rather than someday. As the saying goes, every great journey starts with a single step. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. And speaking about auditions, let's talk about your audition for Jason Weems in Mean Girls. Walk us through the audition. What was running through your head? How did you feel when you got the role? Because I know, as you said, this is one of your first major roles. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, it was. A, it was a weird audition process because I was originally called in for Kevin G, who was oh, really? so beautifully, okay. beautifully played by Mahi, um, brilliant, brilliant actor, and uh, we found out that I didn't get it, and I was like, yeah fine like I don't know if that role was was really for me um and then they asked just to see me for uh more of like an ensemble part it, he didn't necessarily have um lines in the movie but you know we were like sure why not go in it's, it's great experience and you know awesome team to work with great first credit and they had me read the Jason Weems sides uh but I at that point wasn't auditioning for Jason Weems but I read the sides for Jason Weems um we sent it in and I remember like twiddling my thumbs forever and at this point I was still kind of waiting to hear back for the ensemble track that they had me in for mm -hmm. um so I had no clue on their end that they were like oh Jason cool we got him um yeah but we ended up getting the call after I was like oh my gosh it's been like we you get put on like hold or like a bail check or things like that um, yeah on your end as an actor to know like where you are in the process. Mm -hmm. Next up on the show, we have actor John Eljor, who plays Jason Weems in the 2024 remake of the hit movie, Mean Girls. John, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. I'm doing great. It's finally sunny in New York, so I'm loving it. Very nice. I can't say the same in Canada. It is pretty cold, but uh, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> Before we get into your success with Mean Girls and your character, Jason Weems, let's talk about, let's take it back to the beginning. I know that you wanted to originally be a doctor, um, but then you followed your passion for musical theater. So tell us about that time. Yeah, I think it was like a, a quintessential kind of immigrant child path uh, that I took. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, in, in high school, I was just super into science and biology and, you know, books. And I was going down that path. Um, did this little like shadowing program at uh, Johns Hopkins the summer before I graduated. And then I think in the middle of that, something just kind of clicked and I was like, whoa, this is, this is, whoa, I like really have to do it if I'm gonna do it. Um, and I just remember talking with my mom and uh, you know, luckily, you know, I have very, very supportive parents and she was kind of just saying the whole, uh, the whole idea of don't look back and say, what if? you know mm -hmm. and so kind of last minute i just uh, applied to musical theater oh, nice. schools and just kind of hoped for the best and it ended up working out yeah it definitely did i feel like musical theater is something that is very difficult because you definitely can't be shy in that you really have to immerse yourself so <laughs> tell us about for you like were you ever shy growing up or how did you kind of you know get out of your comfort zone oh lord not at all no <laughs> um <laughs> Probably still. I'm like, I'm, I'm an over, over sharer kind of uh, extroverted person. Oh, okay. Interesting. 
Um, yeah, no, as, as a child, I was, I was definitely the one where the teachers were like writing on the report cards, like a oh, pleasure to have in class, that kind of kid who yeah. um, I think was just a, that's just a nice way of saying that I talk a lot. <laughs> um, so it was, it was, yeah, I was, I was never really like a, a shy child, but musical theater is definitely one of those things where you have to kind of dive all in. And I think that was a part of school in my training that I was maybe new to, um, I was like comfortable, you know, yeah. talking and, and public speaking and, and stuff. But the idea of like allowing yourself to be weird or like be embarrassed or do something without fear of judgment uh yeah that was that was a that was a big shift when it came to the acting world for me yeah and you know uh mean girls is not your first time working with notable actors i know that you worked with tina fey christopher Watkins. so tell us about some of the notable roles you've been in yeah so mean girls was um it was my first movie but yeah i had worked with some people before so a uh, month or two out of college um i did this beautiful play called Tell Them I'm Still Young. Uh, it was written by Julia Doolittle and directed by Maya Drellis. It was at New York Stage in film with um, Michelle Pock and Andre Brower. And it was um, just like the craziest kind of first, or it was my second job out of college. It was the craziest like second job out of college I could have imagined just acting across these like legends. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, ended up, uh, booking a lot of off-Broadway shows, and through that, kind of, I've worked with uh, Catherine Gallagher, Zoe Lister Jones, um, Michael Esper, uh, but yeah, and Christopher Walken. That was a that was a crazy yeah. one. Um, I did an episode of uh, of uh, the Outlaws, which Very I don't nice. know when it's Who knows? But <laughs> it'll it'll show at some point, and I'm there. <laughs> the, um, Mr. Walken himself. <laughs> Yeah, but but Mean Girls was a crazy, crazy set to be with with all those all those people. They were insanely talented. Mm -hmm. And talking about epic experiences, I know that you were also on American Idol. So tell us about that experience. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, that experience was so wild. I've met some of the um, nicest people from that show and made some like insanely beautiful relationships uh, that were cultivated there. It was a strange kind of like week process of going to Vegas and, you know, doing the TV audition and stuff. And they, you know, they, they flew me out and put me in a hotel and it was very, very beautiful. Um, very appreciative of that staff and the producers uh, who I'm, I'm still in touch with, which they are very, very nice. But yeah, that process was, was a lot of, uh, kind of like tv and film which like it's kind of like sit around and and wait and then you do something there's a saying for that i'm forgetting what the saying is those are the or, worst when you're waiting for the audition right because the nerves just keep building and building and then you have to go in <laughs> absolutely and you don't exactly know when you're auditioning either which is yeah. kind of the that's the scary part for me is i really i want to make sure i'm like warm and like my voice is working you know i want to have like sung through the song a time or two um but it was kind of like and you're going and whoa uh but some of this the, the kindest most talented people i've met there mm -hmm. and speaking about auditions let's talk about your audition for jason weems in mean girls walk us through the audition what was running through your head how did you feel when you got the role because i know as you said this is one of your first major roles yeah yeah it was um it was a, it was a weird audition process because I was originally called in for Kevin G, who was oh, really? so beautifully, okay. beautifully played by Mahi, um, brilliant, brilliant actor. And uh, we found out that I didn't get it. And I was like, yeah, fine. Like, I don't know if that role was was really for me. Um, and then they asked just to see me for uh, more of like an ensemble part. It, he didn't necessarily have um, lines in the movie. But, you know, we were like, sure, why not go in? It's it's great experience and you know awesome team to work with great first credit and they had me read the jason weems sides uh but i at that point wasn't auditioning for jason weems but i read the sides for jason weems um we sent it in and i remember like twiddling my thumbs forever and at this point i was still kind of waiting to hear back for the ensemble track that they had me in for mm -hmm. um so i had no clue on their end that they were like oh jason cool we got him um yeah 
but we ended up getting the call after I was like, oh my gosh, it's been like we you get put on like hold or like a bail check or things like that um, yeah. on your end as an actor to know like where you are in the process. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I remember just like sitting on uh, my ex's couch and <laughs> texting my manager and I was like, do they need to hear me sing? Do they want to watch me dance? Like, what am I supposed to do? Because I hadn't sung or danced for them at all. Yeah. I also don't think they knew I could sing or dance until like the end of the entire process. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, and then we got the call and I was like, oh my gosh. So it was it was the craziest, uh, it was the craziest kind of whirlwind of like I texted my manager and truly five minutes later we got the call. And for our viewers that haven't watched the movie yet, tell us a little bit about your character. Yeah, so so Jason is um, Gretchen's kind of like on again, off again fling, shall you say? <laughs> yeah. um, he's he's very like gross. It, that's like a like not like hygienically gross, but just gross. <laughs> um, and and how I would how I would put it, um, he's very icky and like slimy, uh, super like toxically masculine dude um who is just like there to to be with girls and like do high school bro stuff um yeah. <laughs> so so that's him and that's his that's his kind of connection um into the show and he, yeah he mainly has you know his plot intertwined with uh, with gretchen's Mm -hmm. and what was it like combining your passion for music and of course theater together and being in this film it was, it, I mean, it, it was something I think that I was used to on stage. So I was a little more understanding of the process of a musical. Mm -hmm. um, when a little bit like new territory to me was the idea of it being a musical movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the movie part was kind of like strange to me, but the idea of it being a musical was actually super, super comfortable um, with what I am, am used to. Uh, but you know, also with that said, I didn't, I didn't necessarily have to have to sing or dance in this at all. So yeah. it was super, super chill. It was like, it was a pretty, pretty good, like straight acting track. Very, very nice. And I know aside from acting, you're also a music teacher and you're helping others. So tell us about that role. Yeah. Yeah. So I teach uh voice. So I have my, I own my own voice studio. Um, and yeah, that all kind of also happened at, uh, Penn state where I went to college. I remember interviewing because uh, there's during the college audition process you do like uh, you, you sing and you dance and you blah, blah blah and then if they want to, to interview you then you do like an interview and I remember in my interview saying that I really enjoyed the school because it was uh, it had it had a great MFA program for musical mm -hmm. theater voice pedagogy and that was kind of me like being able to blend my science passion and my my art passion um, and so, yeah, I, I should also probably explain what that is, huh? <laughs> uh, it's basically like the science and teaching of voice. Um, so specifically musical oh, theater voice. Nice. Um, okay. Yeah, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, and so I was very, very fortunate that when I went to the program for my BFA in musical theater, um, I was able to kind of take that MFA course as well and, and do them as like independent studies. And I was able to work with a lot of a lot of great professors and uh, great researchers and scientists and voice teachers and voice pedagogues. So uh, it, it they set me up just so beautifully. I could not be more grateful. And now I get to teach voice full time. I have a lesson right after this. Wow, very nice. And John, I'm curious, who would be your perfect dream collab to sing with? <laughs> ah, oh my gosh. To We're going to put it out in the universe so it happens to sing with oh my gosh oh it totally depends on like the moment that i'm in i feel like i can't go wrong with like brandy carlisle i think brandy carlisle is just such a beautiful artist um also like who doesn't want to sing with like beyonce i feel like that would be so <laughs> of <fun>. course yes <laughs> i think a harry styles moment could be really oh. fun we could just be like little tatted dudes on stage i can see that you have the hair going on to both of you <laughs> someone call his people that's all i'm saying <laughs> is call his people um but oh my gosh there's just like there's so many people that i would just be starstruck to to create music with i think it's such a such a beautiful collaborative process
And John, I created my platform to inspire, to uplift, to really showcase that anything is possible if you have a dream and a vision, and of course, the determination. So I want to ask you, what are some barriers that you face when getting into this industry? And how did you overcome them? And what advice would you have for someone else that is maybe struggling to make their dreams come true? They're putting in the work, but they're not seeing results. What would you say to them? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the first thing I would say to them is that there is something that you can provide that no one else is able to provide um mm -hmm. and so whether that comes with a singular job you know every six years or it comes with a job every week you know there's something that only you have that no one else can do and so there's no need to and this is very much easier said than done but there's no need to um harp on the fact of like not getting something mm -hmm as there are so many factors, you know, I wish I knew this going in to the industry and you do, you do know it as an actor and, you know, you figure it out in college, but you don't really, really know it until you're in the nitty gritty of like, you know, final auditions, uh, like lots and lots and lots of final auditions. And you find out, you know, someone got it because you know, they know the producer or someone got it because they're a bigger name pull or someone got it because, uh, it reminded them of their ex-wife you know like it's you know <laughs> it's things that you can't control yeah. and so just getting a callback uh is is such such a win and i think i'd be you know um silly to not point out kind of the the, the racial factor that does go into to acting and and the career of that and i think that's that's a platform i stand uh and speak very loudly about and so I don't want to shy away from that. I think, you know, going into the industry as an actor of color, as a, as a queer actor is um, really, really frustrating at times, you know, and you see people getting things uh, that you know you're able to do, but there are so many barriers in the way. And, and you know, you see these breakdowns and it, 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 they're not, including your race or like they don't want to see that or that's not in their vision or you know yada 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 bajillion things um and so like i think specifically to to actors of color out there or, or queer actors or actors who maybe you know fit this marginalized um identity of some sort is uh it it's the sad truth of like you're gonna do double the work to get half as far but you doing double the work to get half as far makes it twice as easy for the next generation of us that comes along, you know? Mm -hmm. I like that they actually, in Mean Girls, they did put a person of color as one of the main characters, you know, even though that wasn't the original cast. Um, and I know that she did get some backlash for that, but she kind of stood true to that. And I think that also inspired a lot of people. And I like that, you know, diversity is slowly improving. Another thing that I like that you said was that, you know, no one can do what you do. There's, you know, there's a there's a saying it's no one is you and that is your power. So I like that, you know, because everyone has a different time to shine. Right. Some someone's time might be now and your time might be tomorrow. You know, so you just have to keep going. So I like that you said that. And, and John, yeah. What are your current projects? What else are you working on? Yeah. So I, I just finished. Um, well, it should come out, I think, when this interview comes up, um, just in, did uh, just did an episode of FBI's Most Wanted. Um, and then, uh, as previously stated, just did uh, The Outlaws, so that should be coming out as well. Um, and then, aside from that, a lot of, like, uh, theater stuff um, that are tied in some kind of, like, NDAs-ish, not in a scary, pretentious way, just in, like, a way of, <laughs> I don't want to be sued by their estates. Yes. <laughs> um, and so, <laughs> you know, I get it, hoping, yeah. hoping that, that that process kind of... Um, tracks tracks along but aside from that you know i'm auditioning left and right and you know hoping hoping for the next one it's a crazy industry it is well john thank you so much for being on the show today congratulations on all of your success and uh yeah we, we can't wait to have you back on the show to hear your next projects <laughs> oh my god thank you so much for having me I had a blast tag tv is available on roku amazon fire tv apple and android tvs as well as on apple and android phones watch us live through youtube and facebook